Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. Tonight, our guest is Sedley Joseph. He goes by the sobriquet, the penguin. Is it the mighty penguin or just the penguin? Just penguin. Just penguin. <laughs> and he's a teacher, Calypsonian. And we want to welcome you, Sedley, to tonight's program. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, good night from Alan Tobago. The name Penguin. How did it come about? What's the story behind the Calypso name Penguin? Uh, penguin was named not because of Batman's penguin, uh, not because of the penguin in the North or the South Pole, uh, but the name came because of my affinity with literature. And you would know that a penguin paperback is the hallmark of excellence. You, you don't have to read the book to know it's going to be good. As long as it says Penguin. You know it's a good book. Top class. Amazing. I never would have yeah. guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, tell me something, though. As a teacher and a Calypsonian, have you ever been able to find ways that you could use Calypso as a teaching tool? Uh, not often enough, you know. But it isn't that... Calypso cannot be used as a teaching tool. I, I can think of many instances in history, for instance. Uh, you read the history book 20, 30, 40 years after, and it is colored by what the historian uh, thinks, uh, his feelings about it. It is colored by all the years that have uh, intervened since he wrote the book. If you listen to the Calypso of the time, you know exactly what happened, how people felt about it. Uh, for instance, if you listen to Sparrow's Federation now, you know what caused the Federation to, uh, to break up. Right? You know how people felt about the breaking up of the Federation. Uh, 20, 30 years from now, you listen to the Calypsos about the attempted coup. Right? And again, you get an accurate, a very accurate insight as to what happened, how people felt about it. You know, our Calypso is also very, very good for the teaching of values in school. Right? There are a number of Calypsos which give very positive messages. Right? Uh, right now, there are a number of Calypsos on the drug menace, for instance, right? that teachers can use in schools to bring forcibly to the, to, to, uh, to the minds of the children the dangers of drugs, right? We have calypsos and AIDS and, 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 and a whole number of, of, of other very, very positive things, you know, that can be used, that can be, calypso can use, can be used for as, as, as a, a teaching medium. What school do you teach? Uh, Moncton Junior Secondary. In your interplay with children, do you find that there is a resistance toward the, uh, to, um, towards the art form of Calypso? And what, well, if there is, what do you think can be done to improve that? The resistance is there. The resistance is there uh, because children do not hear enough Calypsos. Uh, it's interesting that you should ask that question, that I was doing a, a guest, a lecture with one of the YTEP classes just about three or four weeks ago. And I put the question to them, you know, why is it that uh, young people put up this barrier uh, where Calypso is concerned? And they told me the problem with Calypso is that Calypso is seasonal music. It's for one time of the year. Mm -hmm. right? So they like Calypso at that time. right? But the other kind of music they get all the time. So they know that is music that is supposed to like all the time. So mm -hmm. they like it all the time. And they like Aiso for, for Carnival. Well, I was amazed to see your son with a big trophy at home, which he had won at a Calypso competition at his school. Rosary Boys, I would say. Yeah, they, they tell me he's going to be better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Did you le lead him into that direction, or was it something he gravitated to on his own? Oh, well, they say that the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, hmm. you know. And uh, he, he has an aptitude for it. He hasn't uh, gotten into serious composing as yet. He does a little, he tries a little extempo and a little two lines here and there. Uh, but all the old people say he have the gam, 
he he has it, you know. Uh, this year, for the first time, I tried him in the in the national calypso competition, and just by a mm, he he didn't make it to the finals. Uh, he was first reserve uh, for the national uh, calypso finals. He told me he's ready for them next year again. So that's encouraging. Yes. Well, tonight we want to look at the calypso career of the penguin, Sedley Joseph. We will take a commercial break, and when we come back, we look at a pre-edited video we did at his home. Uh, Calypso came first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell uh, me about your early, early years, you know, when you were a youth, teenager, what interplay did you have with Calypso? I think I've always had a facility with words, you know, and this manifested itself in various ways. I, I would write short stories, I would write poems, I would write songs, right? And I graduated to Calypso. <laughs> because I honestly believe that Calypso is the highest form of expression in the show, in the in the short genre, right? mm -hmm. I I'm speaking in terms of like short story and poetry and so on. I think Calypso is at the pinnacle because you, you, you need to do so many things with, with a Calypso. You, you don't just have to tell a story, you have to evoke emotions, you've got to give a mental picture, you've got to do so many things and you need to have a melody. Well, <laughs> this is the next point I was coming to. When did your poetry start to, let us say, gel with a melody to get that bridge that was needed to get into Calypso? Uh, I remember the first Calypso I wrote, it was uh, something to do with the elections of 1956. I started very, very early. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, your career started somewhere around 79, uh, yeah. your professional career. Yeah, so we're yeah, talking, I'm talking about uh, playing with words and yes, melodies and know, so on. Uh, I, uh, that Calypso, how, how did it go? Every cause much confusion. In the last general election, money beat up the PDP and left no seats for the POPPG. <laughs> I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that um, POPPG got was no seats at all. No no were you actually singing for like a specific? No, no, no. I, I was. I was just. Uh, Writing for the love of writing, love. you know. I, I would write these little things and I would sing them at home and so on, you know. And that. Mm -hmm. I just got pleasure out of it. The first time I stepped on a stage was 1971. That was the year when Valentino had that. Uh, massive hit, no revolution. Dr. William, no, he didn't want no revolution. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I did a stint at Kitchener. I think that wasn't a big hit, there was no grand staff, I think. But it was good enough to see me through the Calypso season. What right. was the tune that you sang? Uh, I you? sang something called Sugar. Hmm? Trinidad is famous for its Calypso. People also know us for the sweet limbo, but what make we superior? And you do hear about it at all. We have so much sugar, we could make you ball. Now if a woman could cook like spice, sugar in she hand. And if your peas and corn grow up nice, sugar in the land. If a fella like sweet food, sugar in it is. And if a woman could move good, sugar, sugar in she wears. <laughs> you know, as you started singing, the memory of it came back, you know. It's amazing, but I didn't even associate you with yes. being the uh, Calypsonian that I know today, the penguin. Yes, Were you uh, singing under the sobriquet penguin at yes, that time? Uh, yes, I was, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened after, after that? After uh, that 
the first year with Kichara, I stayed away for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and each time the boys saw me, they would tell me, what is that man paying you? And come back and do the dinner. You could make, you know, we, we, we need young people in Kai, so come and sing. I remember um, Valentino and Superior particularly kept telling me, come back, come back, come back. And I did go back in 1975. I went back in 1975 uh, and I made my first semi-final in 1975. Is that right? Uh-huh. Uh, I did something called Wishbone, and the other tune was Seasons. Get me a wishbone, even from a fish. Bring me a wishbone, let me make a wish. Because I notice something. Each time election coming, that we poor people who does always scrunt could get anything we want. So I wish election come every month. <laughs> then we could get interview with Prime Minister from TV announcer like you, <laughs> down to taxi driver. <laughs> And though he deaf whole four years, talk up and afraid, is election time, he put on his hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> of course, th those were the days of, of, of the old doctor, you know? Yes. And uh, I, I, I did that, and it, it went on very, very beautifully for the season. I, I did that, and I, I did uh, seasons. Well, all my friends, them want me leave this country to come and join them in America. They say in case the USA does suit me, jump in a grey home to Canada. But not me do do. This season's too few for stupid seasons, and they done. While in Trinidad, we have seasons like we mad. One season coming before one gone. <laughs> and where we have is Calypso season, Mosquito season, Shango season, even Pomsi they have a season. And in kitchen, night and morning, Time and strife, always season in. <laughs> you always had this ability to, to use a word and play on its double meaning. And yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. I, I really, really enjoy it. Right? Do you think and, that and your, your teaching side of you helped you with the lyrical content of your calypsos? I, I, I can't say so, right? Because there are so many teachers who do not have the ability to write calypso, right? So I think it is more my gift, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that, I, because I believe that everybody in nature blesses every individual with a particular gift, mm -hmm. right? And it so happens that my gift is this ability to put words and melodies together. And play with the, the double meanings of yes, yes, words. Yes. <laughs> but let's talk about 1979 because to many people that was the year that the Calypsonian Penguin made some sort of impact on them. And I, I distinctly remember 79 semi-finals with you with a fat cap on singing Telco Tel Poops. Poops. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, Telco Poops was, was big. It, it, it was really it wasn't massive, big, but it was big enough to uh, put me on the Calypso map. For the benefit of those who will, may have forgotten, I'd like you to give me a verse and chorus of Telco Poops. Get your hammers and your pliers, rip down every phone you see. Sunday morning. We'll go marching with phones waving while we sing 
Del coco, del coco, del coco, all you ever done. And we march to the cause we want to say, del coco, del coco, so well. <laughs> The following year, Look the Devil Day was a monster right, hit. Yes. And I want you to tell me about the formation of Look the Devil Day and what, how that season felt for you. Uh, Look the Devil Day, uh, I think it's one of the calypso that I've spent most time in, in writing. In that I wanted everything to be so perfect for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I rewrote that melody about four or five times and each time I found it, the, me the melody was too nice. I, I didn't want a nice melody. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted a rough melody. Symbolic you know? <laughs> term. Yes, yeah. right. Until eventually I got the kind of melody that I wanted, right. And I sat down, I worked the arrangement. I worked out the arrangement down to the last detail you know, and I had everything done on the, on the tape recorder and then I took it to my arranger. I said, okay, tell them, this is it. Do it so for me. Where did ever Where did ever Where did ever Where did ever Essential, a tune that is very close to everyone's heart. Boy, not everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not, <wise. laughs> and not everybody at all, you know. But uh, seriously, you know, that was the album. Uh, oh yes, that, that was the first, the first full length, full -length album that, that we did, right? And Deputy was not earmarked for a road match. Sheriff have their deputy, president does have one too, some in each big company. So we're wrong with me and you. We have to hustle, we have to struggle, so every man and woman deserve a helping hand. A deputy is essential to keep you living by God. If boredom is a threat, or you start to regret, a deputy is what you must get. No sweat. It, it's been a beautiful calypso. It, 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 it is a beautiful calypso. And yeah, uh, it upsets um, Super Blue's attempt at a, at a hat trick, too. Yeah, that, but, you, that, but, that yeah but, but, but you know how much time Blue's keep me out of the road, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we had a thing that each each time Blue's won, right, I, I came second. Yes. And the thing is that he kept winning all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but what was nice, too, is that the other tune that you put together with that Betty Goatee. Betty Goatee. Lovely little tune. Betty I want to talk about the lyrics of that tune. Betty Goatee was the tune that I wanted to push that here, right? Mm -hmm. Because 
that that is me right mm -hmm. uh, that is penguin right and uh, eric williams had just died and i knew that everybody going to sing eric williams calypso and normally i would have stayed away from it right? but then i said no do it right? but make sure you do it differently I rule this country 25 years I'm dead Not then we find I dread Fresh arm till I dead But though me ashes drop You tell them me spirit still on top Baby, baby go to I do it well I blank in the lifetime, I blank in them in death. Even if you is wed up, nothing you wouldn't get. Betty Goody, Betty Goody, I just watching and laughing. Oh, 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 Betty Goody, do. I, I particularly like 1983. You had a, an album which I consider every single tune on the album was a winner. In fact, many a time the the DJs would play the that, that, that was the What Sweet and Good Mouth album. What Sweet and Good Mouth mm -hmm. Bitter. In fact, that was my yes. whole year's Night Road March. I remember mm -hmm. that very well. And uh, The Slipper, The Popo Is Yours. Let's talk about that some of those you, 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 you know that album? That album had four tunes on the hit parade at the same time in Antigua. Mm -hmm. Four of them on the hit parade, you know? And, um, well, of course, I've got a lot of work in Antigua that year because mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> yes, right. But um, that, that was... Uh, Let's talk about each tune and the significance of each tune. What's sweet in goat mode? What's sweet in goat mode? Uh, I made this as a result of the conspicuous spending which was taking place during the, the oil boom years. <laughs> Get who facts and them schoolgirls tell that books and sex doesn't mix too well. Tell the youth who gone off on top that they are the future and hope. Tell them if they're too tight, nothing wouldn't go right. It's them and the whole country blind. And keep singing every day. Remember, mommy said. What keep you flying high, same thing does make you cry. Little bit of treasure, little bit of pleasure. So you take, and you take, and you take, and you take, mistake. What sweet is going to the sour in the The new bourgeois drinking scotch, traveling at the bar. Video and stereo like peace. Air condition car, they break breeze. But not a plantation, so next generation could truly say, This is my land. It is, it is so relevant, right? Even today, right? That maybe now people are able to realize exactly what I was talking about so many years ago. The other tune, the slipper, did not look like a typical competition type tune. And then all of a sudden it sort of crept in on us. Let's talk about the slipper. Different yeah. type of yes. calypso, different mode, um, and different structure. It, 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 hap it, happened, um, it, happened, it happened home. We, we were chatting, right? Uh, we were sitting down home, lining, and we were discussing the various ways in which a gentleman knows that he get in it, <laughs> you know. And somebody say, hmm, when you were, when, when, 
And you come home and you see a shoe, somebody's shoe there, and some, a whole number of things uh, came up. I said, well, you know something? A man know he really getting it. Then you come and meet a slipper. I said, because a slipper is a funny thing, you know. A slipper moon means a living here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
Well, 1984 must have been a high point in your career yes. to go all the way and win the Monarch. And we want to talk about the two tunes that did it for you in 1984. Uh, by 1984, I was ready. I told I wasn't ready in 82. Mm. <laughs> you were ready in 84? I, I was ready in 84. And uh, I, I took my time. I took my time with believing in jail. The Calypso came like most Calypsos, out of a personal experience. I had been looking, I, I went looking for a gentleman. All, all I got was some vague address in Barataria. And I had worked in Barataria for a number of years. Barataria, as far as I know, knew was a very, very friendly place. place. And I went looking for this gentleman somewhere between uh, 8th and 10th Avenue and between 8th and 11th Street, somewhere in that general vicinity. And uh, it was, it, it was a, it, it was a shock. It was morning, it was about nine, half past nine in the morning. And uh, People were not willing to come out of their doors to speak. Right? People would just open their, their jealousies and tell you, well, no, um, we don't know anybody, so, you know. And I, I remember even in a big open yard, the lady stayed quite up in the back of the yard, right, and spoke to me. Uh, I was into it, she spoke to me from there. To say, but wait a people are very, very scared. And uh, because you look for the reason for people being so scared and you realize that it was because there, were, there, there was so much, uh, there, was, there, there, there were so many robberies going on, uh, there, there was so much violence and, uh, and you looked around and you saw the evidence of it, that people had started uh, bowing and they were doing the Everybody talking about freedom, but it's like everybody blind. If we in shock We live in a jail We live in a jail While criminals out on their bodies may catch him They jail in the whole jail You can walk the streets No more afraid to walk You don't like the fighting war Softman had started running away from long before the, the, the Calypso season. She wants a man, a man to protect her, a man who would stand up for her, a man who would make sure that she isn't taken advantage of. The one kind of man that she don't want at all. How old you know so good? A soft man.
it's very, very difficult to win a Monarch title in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. But I think it's even more difficult to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> And in yes. 1985, I thought you had a good double. Yes, but you seem to be prepared. Games and freedom. Let's um, talk about 1985. No. I don't like to talk about it here because even to today, I don't know what happened. Now you know you have a crown to defend, so it means that you sit down and you write to defend the crown. Correct. Right? And when I was finished with Freedom Road, I thought, all oh, right, they had to wait until the next year to beat me. <laughs> had a good number, yes. you know. And I, I got the, the choreography, I got the, what, what you call it, presentation. I, down pat, yeah. Everything down pat. And we got on stage and everything went dead. No monitors were working. Nothing, 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 nothing. I remember my mouth got dry, dry, dry. <laughs> I said, Lord, what is this going on? And the musicians are blowing and they're looking at me, right? And I am looking at them and you can't figure out what it is going on. Uh, until maybe somewhere around the second verse, everything came yeah. back alive. And I guess maybe what I ought to have done was just stop. And walk off the stage. And right. But uh, these things come with hindsight. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I, at that time, I just went through with the performance, and I knew it was it was a flop at at at, at that point. You know. My second tune, games, I thought to be a clever composition. Now, now, here, now here's what happened. Let me make you a joke. Now, um, a few months after, we were rehearsing for some competition, and uh, one of my colleagues say, "You know, I can't understand this thing. How a man could." Almost bust in first tune, right? And still run fourth in our competition. Well, I didn't seem to understand that was two really powerful calypsos. <laughs> games by itself. Yes. Understand But games by itself was good enough to, 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 to come forth. Oh. It's a stadium we're living in. incident in fact affect your career subsequently? Yes? yes, 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 it definitely did. Yeah, because you sang a number of good tunes in my estimation after that. Back Like Heaven, yes. uh, The Kettle and so on. In fact, nothing, you know. nothing happened after that. Nothing <laughs> happened after that. <laughs> What's been the high point in your career? I don't know. Uh, we did uh, we did something at Carnegie Hall, right? 
and there was also the Apollo Theatre. And I've always been unsure in my mind as to which one I would call the highlight. Uh, I remember at the Apollo, when I got there the night, right, and I looked up, there was my name in lights. I, I, I mean, I'll be in lights! Big, 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 right? And who was I? I think I was with explainer. I say, when you I do even have a camera, boy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that you, you would have liked to, to take, to, to, to have recorded on film. And the, the Carnegie Hall thing, uh, Sparrow and I did the, the Carnegie Hall thing. It was a Brazil Trinidad uh, contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did their thing. Right? And we did our thing. They did their samba and we did our colleagues, and they did samba and we did colleagues. So and we had we had agreed that for the grand finale, all of us would get on stage. The two people from Brazil and the two people from Trinidad, and it would be a kind of war like. Mm -hmm. you know. It wasn't a war, but it was a massacre. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I used to be a gourmet. Every fancy food I eat, from Boston to the Quasi, every restaurant I beat. Yes, I ate well. I am proud to tell. Was a different menu every day. But I done wrong, and I eat in home, so I qualified to stand here and say, home food rich, home food sweet, better try and get some quick. It richer than tonic, it's sweeter than music, and home food, when you eat home food, home food doesn't get you sick. See what I mean? Just to make the heart feel glad, but don't give them all your time while treating the sherry fad. Notice carefully, the name deputy and deputy get it straight. It's not a duplicate, but a deputy is essential to keep you living vital. If the man dread like that, and you ain't have one yet, a deputy is what you must get. No sweat. <laughs>